All right, guys. Today we're putting a new uh, bearing carrier and a new axle. New chain sprockets on my 400EX. So here's what the old one, the bearings went out and it just chewed inside that case up. It wore the bearing surface down a little bit where it's a hair smaller than the uh, bearing would be so it would be spinning in there the surface under here is chewed up for the um, seal to ride on and same thing with this i was about to put it back together with this and see if i can get it where you can see it uh, maybe there you can't see it very well, but that surface is chewed up. So I got a new one. Put my old uh, rotor on it. So now I have a nice new seal. Clean the nut up. It's working great. When that goes on, I had one time years ago. Uh, yeah, go turn the compressor off. All right, got the compressor off. So I had one time years ago that this um, lock nut here that jams up against this to keep this in place had backed off at the dunes. I caught it while the bearings were still good. I was able to tighten it up, and ever since then, I wrap this with electrical tape after it's tightened. Um, they make fancy nuts. They're real expensive, but just wrapping electrical tape on it works. I wrap it on there and don't have to worry. Um, the sprocket, it's not horrible, but I figured while I was at it, I'd go ahead and throw a new chain and sprocket at it. So there's the brand new one. I run steel sprockets instead of the aluminum ones. I got uh, a new front and I believe I bought a gold chain. Yep, I got a new gold chain. Never bought a gold one before. Anyway, so what I have here is a Lone Star. And they've changed the design. I had Lone Star. I put in a 250X. That was my son's. And uh, years ago, they had a greaser, and you could slide this out, and you could pump that thing full of grease. Kind of a pain, you have to slide it out, but now it's all sealed bearings, and that's the way they build it now. They figure that the grease that's in these bearings lasts the life of the bearing, so as long as you, you know, keep them clean. So I'll put a light coat of uh, grease on the seal when I slide it together. I've already got it slid in there. I've got the uh, brake bracket on there, the clip on already. And then this will bolt on here after I get it all together. So we will go ahead and smear a little bit of uh, grease on there. Slide that axle in. Slide this on here. 
and it slides in there and then you back this off until you can see that slit in it there you go and that little spot there where did i put it oh it's up here you take this little snap ring here slap you take down there you tap that on then you back that off and that's what uh gives you your adjustment so i'll go ahead and get that on there and we'll go from there okay so bend these little tabs out of the way i got a little bolt right here a little bolt right there take those out and i can remove this chain guard and then the master link on the chains right there i'll pop that off take the chain apart there's a bolt right there bolt right there take those off and you can remove the uh keeper and then you remove that sprocket slide the new one on put everything back together throw the new chain on and then we'll go ahead and adjust things so it's, i don't have as good a light in my shop as i would like and this is over on the other side where i store the toy hauler and i'm working on fixing this side of the building up and it's really dark over here but i knew when i took it apart it would probably be apart a while so i didn't want it in the main shop taking up room okay so there's this little back piece on here there we go it's together like that so one piece is behind it one piece is in front of it so that's supposed to help protect the uh case if you break a chain you don't want the chain going in here and jamming it could bust your case so yep yeah, i'll get those out we'll pop that master link loose and uh get this off and start getting the other parts back on okay so I got the old sprocket and the new sprocket. Uh, let me grab a little extra light here. There. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but a little bit of difference in the wear. The uh, teeth will get oblonged and they'll start to look like they're bending over. But most of the time, that's just how much wear there is. So that sprocket was was bad for a while actually so now I'll just slide the new one on and then you have this little ring well it's not a ring but this little thing it slides on it turns a half a a uh, tooth and then bolts to that and that's what keeps the thing from falling off Get that in there. Come on. You got to line it up just right. It slides on there. And then these bolts go into the sprocket. And that's all that holds it. Pretty simple. Oops. Problem. The off center. Oh. Well, there's something I wasn't aware of. These two bolt holes are off center of this hole, so it only can go on one way. If I had that on there, one bolt would line up, but the other bolt would not. There we go, that's better. Look at that, we're both learning. I didn't know that either. There we go, a nice brand new Sun Tour chain so i'm going to extend this out compare it to the other one see if they actually sent me the right length or if i have to mess with it i'll probably wind up having to mess with it which will piss me off 
That's not what I ordered. So let's see here. Looks a little long. Damn it. Why can nothing ever come right? They sell chains that are universal and you cut them the length and they sell chains that are supposed to be too length. You pay extra for it, but oh yeah, definitely too long. Crap. All right, well, I'll take that next door to the workbench, I guess. I'll work on that. All right, so what I did is I went and got my chain press. It's got a slot on the one side to go around the rivets. The other side has holes put on there to squeeze it together to get the master on far enough. And then I let go and it stayed. Then I was able to put the clip on. So that wasn't bad. Then you turn this back and see how the chain comes tight? Loose, tight, loose. So that's all I do for that. But before I tighten that up, I'll go ahead and get the I'll get the front tightened. I'll go ahead and tighten up those. Okay, so now we're going to... If I can find where I put tape measure. There it is. Okay. So now we're going to adjust cha chain slack. Should be one and three eighths. Do it about two thirds of the way back. So it'll be right about here. And raise this up with all this sticky stuff on here. And push it down. Don't too tight. Take that a little bit. It looks like it's too loose now. Right there. No, no, that's pretty close. All right, let's check that a little better. Raise this up. Hold it there and position my hand so it don't move. Then push it down. One and a quarter. One and three eighths. And then go back just a touch. Right there. Right there. One and three eighths. Okay. I've done these before and I actually have never done it with the torque wrench, but I figure I got this nice little torque wrench now, so why not do it the right way? And then I'll go back and double check them all, because you got two, two here and two here, so when you torque the one on one side, it'll, it'll make the one next to it loose, so you kind of got to See, that one has a little more, and that one's already been torqued. Kind of got to go back and forth till you get them both to where they click, right? Which really isn't the ideal setup, because you could be doing it for a while. <laughs> there we go. All right, so then you tighten these to 22. And we'll tighten that nut out there. And that is... Axle hub nut, 101. This nut here is 101. I got these torque specs offline. And then the, the nuts that hold the axle in and keep the pressure on the bearing, it's 65 on the outer one and then 94 on the inner one, the thin one that jams against it. So I'll go ahead and go through all those and Torque them all down. Oh, then when you put the skid plate on, the skid plate bolts are 22. So you can look this stuff up online and find all that stuff. That's where I got this and just made some notes. 
in here in this part of the shop where I'm working. My phone doesn't work, so I just went outside and made some notes. I'll show you what I'm going to do since I don't have the proper tool for this to get the torque. I already torqued this nut to the 101. Then I set my torque wrench to the uh, 65 that that's supposed to be. So I'm just going to put that on there, hold this out on the end, and kind of get a feel for how much pressure it took to lift that up. And then we'll put this on the nut, and then I'm just going by fill. Until it feels like I'm doing about the same amount of pull. So right here. Okay, about the same distance out from center. Right here. Yep, let's see, right about there. Feels good, there's no side slot. Then you turn this one, whoop, wrong way. Turn this one down. So it touches that, and that one gets torqued to 94. I don't know how well it'll show up, but I set this on, and the skid plate is actually dragging on the chain. So I was going to bolt it up and then try to put a block of wood in here, kind of wedged, you know, off of this and down, because then everything's solid, and then try to beat it down to pull away from this i've done that in the past to get the space and then i was trying to put the skid plate back on there's four bolts on the bottom and then this one right here and i remember the problem that i have on this thing when i've had this off before i can't get the last bolt in so there's one that goes right there i have all the others just started i can't get that one so I'll try pulling the other ones out, put that one in first, go back around, try the others. Um, if that don't work, pull that off and examine it a little bit closer. Okay, so I wound up having to take it off. The bolt that goes in this hole was cross threaded a little bit, so I had to get this out of the way so I can get it straight, get it fixed. So then I'm going ahead and go ahead and hammer this out some while it's off. This right here was going across and then curling up, which of course will raise this side up. If you look across that, I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not, but this area here was all bent up. So I bent that down, pounded that down some, getting some shape back in it. And uh Looks like I'll do a little more massaging on that one there. Get that out of it. That should be, yeah, that should be flat. That's all dented in. So if I get that flat, that'll push this down away from the sprocket. So I got my old bridge out here. I floated away in the high tide. So, it's handy that I haven't put it back yet. One of these days, I gotta get back to work on this monster. At 38 and a half inch, 16, 5, 15 swampers. And it's a uh, 75 CJ5 with a 78 body. I'll get working on it, and then I get to a point where I need a part. So I'll move to another thing, and I need a part, and then I stop, and I make an order. I get a bunch of stuff coming, and then usually when everything shows up, I don't jump back on it because I've got so many different projects. But I need to get back on that. Okay, back to the 400. Okay, so that works. Get a little more room in the holes. And uh, 
I cut a little block and I did a pry bar right there because it just needed just a hair for that to go in. Now I'll torque these things down and uh, drop it on the gun off the ground and try to get it out of here. Okay. First test ride since it's back together. 